And let me give you an example of this, okay? So let's take, for example, cyclobutane. Okay, so cyclobutane can either be in a planar 2D conformation or a puckered 3D conformation. And let's see what both of these conformations look like, all right? Okay, so the planar 2D conformation of cyclobutane, so planar, and this is the 2D conformation, two-dimensional conformation, looks like this, with the carbon here, 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 and here. And let's compare this to, so versus, it's puckered, 3D conformation. Puckered, three-dimensional conformation. And the 3D conformation is going to look like this. And to illustrate this point about torsional strain having the biggest impact on a ring shape, I'm going to tell you that this planar conformation has less angle strain, but more torsional strain when compared to this compound. This compound is going to have greater angle strain, but less torsional strain than this guy. And guess what? According to experimental evidence, cyclobutane exists in the 3D puckered conformation 99% of the time, and the planar 2D conformation only about 1% of the time. And this proves that lower torsional strain is more important. It makes a bigger difference in how stable the compound is. And I know from this drawing, you guys, that it looks like puckered should have more torsional strain because it looks like these carbons are closer together with one another. But you have to imagine this thing in three dimensions with this carbon coming out towards you. And if you go home and build this with your model set, you'll realize that the bonds are further away from each other in this puckered form than the planar form, okay? So go home and try that. And hey, you guys, just in case you're wondering, angle strain comes from atoms having bond angles that deviate from their preferred bond angles. For example, each carbon of this compound has four single bonds to it. And what's the hybridization of an atom with four single bonds? sp3, right? And the shape of something that's sp3 is tetrahedral with bond angles of 109.5 degrees. But check it out. The bond angles on each of these carbons this carbon, this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. Each of these carbons is bonded at 90 degree right angles. They all want to be bonded at 190 degrees, but here they're being forced to bond at 90 degree bond angles. Therefore, we say that this conformation has angle strain. Anytime an atom is forced to bond at a lesser or greater angle than it wants, that's considered angle strain, okay? And you'll see that with the puckered 3D conformation, that this has an even greater angle strain than the planar 2D conformation. And that's because these carbons are being forced to bond at even less than 90 degrees. Here they're bonded at 90 degrees, here they're less than 90 degrees, okay? They wanna be as close as they can to 190 degrees, their preferred bond angle. That's why this has greater angle strain than this conformation. Okay, so this was the first type of relationship a ring compound can have in terms of conformational isomers. Okay, so the first one was planar versus puckered. The next one we're going to be doing is axial versus equatorial. So let's go ahead and erase this so we can get into that second type of relationship. Okay, so the second relationship that a ring compound has when it comes to conformational isomers is axial versus equatorial. Let's write that down.
axial versus equatorial. And go ahead and write in parentheses right next to this, substituent orientation. Substituent orientation. Because this deals with how substituents are oriented on the ring, all right? Okay, so remember how we had the planar versus puckered relationship? This talked about the orientation of the ring itself, the shape of the ring. With the axial versus equatorial relationship, this is going to deal with the orientation of substituents on the ring, okay? Substituent orientation. And let me start off by telling you that when a substituent is equatorial, it's more stable than if it was axial. So a ring will always favor the most equatorial conformation of its substituents, the most stable conformation. And you have no idea what a lot of these words means just yet, but we're going to get to it in a second. Let's just write some of this stuff down so we can refer to it later. Okay, so we just said that the equatorial conformation is more stable than the axial conformation. Therefore, a ring will always favor the most equatorial conformation of its substituents. Therefore, the ring will favor the most equatorial conformation. The most equatorial conformation. Okay, so there are two ways a substituent can stick off of a ring. It can either be axial or it can be equatorial. If a substituent is axial, then it will either stick straight up or straight down. It will not stick diagonally up or diagonally down. It will stick straight up or straight down as if it was on a vertical axis. That's why we call them axial. So let's see some examples of these axial substituents. And we're going to be dealing with axial and equatorial substituents in terms of six carbon rings, also known as cyclohexane. Okay, so hey, there's two ways you can draw cyclohexane. You can either draw it in the planar 2D conformation like this, where you have a carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, one, two, three, four, five, six, cyclohexane, six carbons in that ring. Okay, so you can either draw it in the planar 2D conformation like this, or you can draw it in the puckered 3D conformation, also known as a chair conformation, and this looks like this. With carbons here, 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 and here. Okay, you guys, so you can draw six carbon rings, cyclohexanes, in either of these two forms, the 3D puckered chair conformation or the 2D planar conformation. But hey, you guys, six carbon cyclohexanes, six carbon rings, are most stable in the chair form. So let's ignore this planar form for right now. And let's concentrate on our 3D chair conformation. And hey, why do they call this thing a chair? Well, if you use your imagination, you can kind of see this as one of those Barco loungers where you lay back in. Okay, so check this out. Here's the guy. He's just chilling. He's laying down with his feet up and his hands behind his head like that. You guys see that? Okay, so that may or may not be why they call this thing the chair confirmation, but you guys get the idea. The important thing to know here is that cyclohexanes exist in this chair form and that substituents attached to the carbons of this ring can either be in an axial or equatorial conformation, okay? So let me show you how to draw axial substituents coming off the carbons of this ring. And there's some sort of formal method that you can use to do this, and I'm sure you'll read about it in your textbook. But hey, let me show you the way that I do it. It's a little bit more of a visual method than a thinking method, all right? All right, so let me go ahead and erase our guy right here. 